Hi, welcome to Mental Health Monday. We are back and we are doing our series on grief and loss or loss and grief. And so this series is going to take us into a series of articles that you'll have available to you at HeidiGaiman.com as well as discussions every Monday at noon here for Mental Health Monday Live and archived on the Heidi Gaiman Writes YouTube channel. And then also there'll be two podcasts available for you as well. So I'm excited about this series because I think that loss and grief is a large issue that impacts all of us. You know, we're all mortal beings and so we will all have losses in our life. Uh, that are related to those we love and death and uh, recovering from that as well as connecting still to those relationships in different ways uh, because we have Jesus and we have eternity available to us. But loss is also broader than that. Loss is so much broader than the idea of death and loss in that very uh, final way or even in a final way connected to eternity. Loss also is a transitional thing that we experience in life in many other areas. And so tomorrow on the blog, you'll find a podcast available that goes through just tons of losses that we might experience in life. And a lot of you readers uh, and viewers were helpful in compiling this list. And so you'll find things from moving to new stages of life to uh, those deeper losses that happen when we are impacted by death and the reality of death in our everyday life. Uh, and we always confront those with hope in Jesus. I don't know how people exist in all the loss we experience in life without that hope. And I think that's one thing that you're seeing around you right now with the coronavirus outbreak and uh, just that we are all deeply impacted by both loss that is close, you know, up close and personal in our lives and intimate relationships, but also losses that happen on a more global scale because we're humanity and because we are connected and God is is the great connector of all of us as people all around the world who are made in his image. And then as the body of Christ, as Christians, we dial into that and we want to experience more of that. And so we're always connecting and being connected. And, and that's really the heart of any kind of mission work. That's the heart of any kind of local body of Christ as well. So we're going to talk about what does grief look like today? What does healthy grief look like in particular? Uh, and this is a question I get a lot. Uh, it's important, I think, to take a piece of judgment out of it right at the beginning. So when we look at the idea of grief, understanding that there is not a right or wrong way to grieve. Like there's no system that God gives us in scripture and says, you better grieve like this. Uh, and wouldn't that be nice sometimes <laughs> if he just gave us a system, but he doesn't. And so honoring that we will grieve differently. My grief is likely to look different from your grief just as much as my losses will often look different from your losses. And sometimes we have shared losses and that's a unique way that God connects us often or shared experiences of grief. Uh, but as a blanket understanding, we are not gonna judge each other for the way we grieve. And that is healthy. <laughs> that is healthy is when I am not placing on you what I think an expectation of grief is or loss is and how you should respond which is one reason why grief is really hard on marriages, which we'll talk about in the podcast coming out tomorrow, is because we, uh, we often want our partner to experience grief in the same way we do, and then we end up feeling like they're not grieving or that they are doing better than we are or worse than we are and we need to care for them. And all of this stuff wrapped up is in the expectations of what grief should look like. So know this, what is healthy is that grief is going to look different for everyone, different for everyone. If anybody has any questions, I see some live viewers, please feel free to put them up. Or if you have comments, I'd love to hear from you all. And I like to hear about your experiences too. Uh, so I want to go over in this video of what grief looks like a little bit of Elizabeth Kubler, I can never say her name, Kubler Ross's model um, of the five stages of grief with the new sixth stage added, 
Now, any model is useful, but we're not married to it. Remember that. It's a useful model. We're not married to it. And so uh, we're, we're, this is going to give us a good idea of some things that we experience in loss and grief uh, without us expecting maybe that everyone goes through it in the same order or that they have the same intensity of each thing. And then also with the overarching idea that she never intended it to be in an orderly fashion. Like you go through this stage and then this stage and then this other stage and we're getting healthier and better as we go. Instead, her idea was to create a model as she saw grief happening in terminally ill patients and the people around them that uh, would be more like a, like a circle that keeps going and turning in on itself or i've seen it as a roller coaster which is really helpful where we go you know up and down and then up some more and then way down and then up, you know and then like a little bit steady for a while so understand and then it kind of comes back in itself i've also seen it as a child scribble like where grief just looks like this we're all over the place on the page and everything like that and so all of these things might be something that people experience and are likely to experience in loss and grief, but that doesn't mean that uh, it happens in a correct order or anything like that. Um, so the first stage of grief is denial. And sometimes people add shock. I would say that that's part of denial, uh, rightfully so. So when we find out that someone we love has died, when we find out some news uh, that is the first way that our body responds very often to protect us. That's a protective factor, just like fight, flight, or freeze that happens when we see danger, is that our body is like, wait, this is too much information, too much emotional overload, and so there's a protective factor of shock often. And that's very normal and very natural, and thank your body. Thank your body for giving you a minute to process information and to take it in bite-sized pieces. That's one reason that happens. When our body becomes flooded, we call it, with emotions, it starts to shut off different systems. And so just for us to be able to take in the information and then it starts to turn our body back online, if you will, in different areas. And so good job, body. Good job, God, for creating our bodies like that. There's a really good book I read called The Year of Magical Thinking that talks about this a lot, and it's a biography of the author Joan Dyden's experience with her own losses and two big losses in a, in a year, and just the thing she told herself that... Uh, you know, oh, maybe if I uh, wouldn't have put that shirt away, like my husband wouldn't have died. And those are the kind of things that we do as at any stage of grief, but I think we see them uh, early and we see them late, especially because we get into this uh, just rearranging our thoughts and coming to a space where maybe we'll feel less confused uh, and less flooded by the grief experience itself. All right, so we need connection. That's the reality. Um, we need to, oh, my house is going to get crazy because everyone's home. Surprise. That's fun. Um, and so can you take care of that, dear? <laughs> my dogs are like, ah, my husband just came home. So we need, or we need to not isolate ourselves, but at the same time be giving a little bit of space. Um, so for those of you caring for someone in grief and for those of you experiencing grief, know that it's, it's a good thing and healthy to have both uh, a little bit of time to process yourself and you're gonna need some alone time and you're also going to need connection. And so people coming in to support, being very graceful about that, being very gracious about that. Um, and you know, early on in grief, people might need a little bit more alone time to process. Uh, and then let's try to move closer to connection as we go through it. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of little losses as we go through grief. I think that that's something that's shocking. Like, it's not just like, oh, here's the loss, especially when someone dies. Here's the loss. And then we're headed uphill the rest of the time. Instead, it's like little tiny loss. Oh, here's another thing. And here's another thing. And here's another thing. Um, and so that's one reason we circle back to some shock and some denial and all of that throughout the process. Um, know that uh, the next stage is anger and that anger is real and okay and not necessarily sinful. You know, we need to pick places to put that. Um, but when you lose someone you love, uh, this is Heidi's, Heidi's opinion here. You get to act like a jerk a little bit if you need to. Like you get to have a space that can be a space that you fill with your frustrations and you should have people in your lives who can help you hold that for a moment. 
for a moment. And so understanding that God is a perfect place to put that, that's the whole purpose of lament. That's the purpose of the Psalms and lamentations in the Old Testament is that God can take any of our emotions and he loves to hear from us. And so that's a good place in prayer and by talking to God, just in conversation, the anger that you feel about this loss, whatever that loss is. There's no hierarchy of suffering. You'll hear that from me over and over again during this series. Um, so your loss, no one gets to say whether it's big or small and what that should look like. So give it to God first. Uh, there's a lot of uh, confusion in grief and so that can often mask is anger and so instead kind of giving yourself a space to ask the questions of why and what's happening here and I don't understand is a good thing um, I think it's normal to be pretty hacked that someone you love has been taken from you um, tell that to God if that is what you are feeling. And that does not mean you have no faith. That means that you are connecting with him in your experience in this moment. So that's a good thing. Go ahead and do that. Um, let's look at the next stage, bargaining, bargaining. So this is where we're trying to make a new normal. I think that's the positive vantage point of it. Like we are trying, <laughs> we're trying to get to a place um, where we can begin to deal with this thing that's in our life, which is loss and grief. And so we try to make sense of it. We try to help our brains make sense of it. And so we start kind of making deals with God in particular. Sometimes we'll even make deals with people around us. Uh, but especially as a spiritual experience, we often will say, like, if you do this, God, I'll do this. Or um, if you're like this, God, then I'll be like this. Uh, or we look for signs from God because we want to be... Uh, reminded that he is faithful. Um, instead, I would say, you know, just go to the scriptures, go to your people who are going to remind you about who God is and where he is in this moment. Um, and just know that that bargaining is really normal, really normal and not unhealthy. Um, but where, again, where can we put it? Where can we go with it? Go to the word and go to someone who's trusted that you can ask questions to. The next phase is our stage is depression. And so this is just that place of really the sadness crashing in, just crashing in. And that can be really, again, overwhelming. And as many of you know who've experienced loss and grief is it tends to ebb and flow and it'll come in moments that you least expect it. It's normal uh, to feel a sense of withdrawing a little bit, needing a little more time to yourself. That's okay. Also remember to connect in different ways as well. That's healthy to do both. Um, you might have some eating and sleeping struggles. And so just being aware of that, again, normal, getting what you need, uh, trying to help your body eat healthy, uh, even when food doesn't taste good. Those kind of things will help your body heal because it is a very physical process, grief is, but that can be a struggle when nothing tastes good and you just don't have an interest, right? That's the definition of dep depression. It's just a lack of interest at some point and that sadness that comes up with it. And understand that a sense of hopelessness or kind of a inevitability of mortality, that awareness of that is very, very normal. Again, let God work in that. Talk to people who love you. Uh, process that with them. Uh, and, you know, at, at this phase, I think we, we want to challenge ourselves to kind of keep moving, but also know, give yourself space and a whole lot of grace. Uh, you know, dial into hope, maybe post up some uh, quotes about hope, some Bible verses about hope that really speak to you because that is going to help, you know, move through this stage and this stage will end, I promise, and another season will come. Uh, and even when it comes back again, it kind of bites you, uh, knowing that it will move to the next season, which is acceptance is the next stage. So acceptance is this place that we get. It's like a gift of grief that, that we can really sense the growth. So one thing you'll hear in the podcast and on the articles over and over in this series is that grief is always a growth process. I actually learned that myself recently uh, from a woman who came to speak to our church from hospice. And I was like, this is so good to like be reminded of this is that there's a sense of growth in grief and we really get that strongly in this place of acceptance and so when you feel that sense of growth like okay god is growing me in this i'm learning new things this is really hard but there's some nuggets here that is wow that's a gift and that is what we call acceptance 
doesn't mean you won't move back to depression or anger or bargaining or all those other things. Um, but you know, we're kind of circling back around to acceptance and getting closer to it as we move forward. Um, and moving into grief to heal with it is really helpful. Like recognizing it, naming it, claiming it, uh, asking for help with it. That is a good place of grief. Uh, again, I just want to remark, it's not linear, not linear. Don't, don't be sold on that. That's, that's important. Um, it's also helpful to be able to recount memories in any stage of grief. And we'll go more into that in two weeks when we do tools, tools of grief, but know that in acceptance, especially, uh, it's really cool because we start to begin to look at memories with pain, but also without pain. And so understanding that we can have both joy as well as sorrow in the same moments is a good place of growth in acceptance. And we can live kind of in two worlds in a healthy way where we are pilgrims on this earth. We have one foot on the ground here and one foot firmly in heaven and in eternity where God has called our loved one uh, as a believer in Jesus uh, and has called us one day. So we get to be reunited. It's harder when we don't have that assurance for our loved one. And when that happens, we just, we lean into God and who he is in eternity, the God of life um, and the God of care and concern and the God of justice, those kind of things to remind ourselves that he's in charge and he's a good God, whatever that looks like. Um, and so the sixth stage that we're going to talk about more next week when we talk about growth oriented grief and what that growth looks like a little bit more is making meaning, making meaning. And that's been added in the last several years. Um, and it's really, really important. And that's where a lot of times our Christian hope, especially like will tap into and know what that is and we'll see it in technicolor in our loss and grief experiences. So, you know, if you've lost someone you love, if you've had any kind of loss in your life, whatever that looks like, I'm truly sorry. That is one of the hardest places in life. And we don't want to minimize that for us or for anyone else. Like, just know that that stinks. It stinks. Loss stinks. And let's say it out loud. Um, also know that there is no place we can go that God forsakes us. He's always with us, even when he feels far off. And he is always working even when we can't see it. Um, so that is Mental Health Monday today. I encourage you to subscribe over at HeidiGaiman.com if you want to get the articles in your email inbox, if you want to uh, make sure you don't miss a podcast or miss something coming out next. And then next week, we'll talk about growth-oriented grief, and we'll talk about some more like action and uh, oriented ways to move through grief as a good thing and mourning as a process in our lives. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.